Hello and welcome to Channel Blano. I'm your host Blaine Harris and today we will be discussing the history of animation. When one usually thinks of animation, they think of Disney, and there is good reason for that, having been instrumental in the development of animation as an art form. But there is more to animation than just Disney, and today I will be discussing the whole history of animation from its earliest roots to the present day. The Magic Lantern, which was first invented in 1659, was an early form of screen projector in which moving images were presented. However, these images were a result of moving parts rather than succession of images. It would not be until 1832 with the inventions of the phenoscope, which was able to show a continuous motion of movement for the first time that animation was truly created. Following the invention of the phenoscope was the zoetrope. In 1833, Simon Stamper, one of the inventors of the Phenoscope, made the suggestion that a sequence of images could be placed on a disc, cylinder, or a looped string of paper stretched around two parallel rollers. The following year, in 1834, British mathematician William George Horner brought up a cylinderic version of this, which he called a diadellum. For the next three decades, though, the Phenoscope remained the most common animation device. It wasn't until 1865 that the definitive zoetrope was invented by William Ensign Lincoln, which can had easily replaceable images. The zoetrope worked as the object rotated around, an image is shown, then no image, and then another, which created the illusion. The Kinograph, or flip book, soon followed in 1868 which was the first example of moving images not done in a circular process, but in linear form. In 1877, Emilio Verno created the Praxinoscope. It was similar to the zoetrope, as it worked by using a string of pictures that were placed around an inner surface of a spring cylinder. The Praxinoscope improved on the zoetrope by replacing the narrow viewing slits with a circle of mirrors which produced a brighter and less distorted image. In 1906, the very first animated film was created, a short silent film directed by James Stewart Blackton. The film used stop-motion photography and cutouts to create a sense that the drawings are moving by themselves. Two years later, French Emile Cole produced Phantasmagory Majori. Phantasmagory is the first true example of an animated film, as it was the first film to use hand-drawn animation, with each frame drawn on paper and then shooting each frame onto a negative film. Winsor McKay was an early pioneer of animation in film. His most popular and well-known work was that of Gertie the Dinosaur. Gertie was extremely popular and was one of the earliest ex examples of character development in animation. The film was the first to employ key animation techniques such as keyframes, registration marks, tracing papers, the mutoscope, action viewer, and animation loops. The film proved to be highly influential, influencing animators such as the Fletcher Brothers, Otto Mesmer, Paul Fer Terry, and Walt Disney. The film was also the first to combine live-action footage with hand-drawn animation. 1914 proved to be quite an important year for animation, as in the very same year as Gertie, John Bray opened John Bray Studios. His studio would go on to develop a streamlined process known as the cell technique, which involved the animation of moving objects on celluloid sheet, which then led to animators photographing sheets over a background image to create a sequence. The process led to the creation of Colonel He's a liar! The first series to feature a recurring character. The 1920s would see the emergence of many big names to animation. The first character of animation to achieve widespread fame and recognizability was Felix the Cat. Felix starred in a wide array of cartoon silent shores throughout the 1920s and became a household name during the decade. In 1921, a small animated studio was founded called Lathograms. The studio was contracted to produce 12 cartoons, by which only 9 were produced, with the studio folding in 1923. One of these projects included the 1923 silent short Alice in Wonderland. The creator, Walt Disney, hoped that by including a real-life character in an animated world, he would reverse his fortunes. 
The Alice comedies proved to be Disney's first success, with 57 shorts produced. However, it is Mickey, though, that would define Disney. But Mickey's existence is itself a bit of luck. Or bad luck. Before there was Mickey, there was a rabbit. Oswald, the lucky rabbit. Or in this case, the unlucky. Oswald was created in 1927. 26 Oswald cartoons were produced by Disney, with Oswald quickly rising to fame, rivaling Felix the Cat and Coco the Clown at its peak. However, in 1928, as Disney attempted to negotiate a new contract, he lost the rights of the character, with Universal Studios claiming full rights to Oswald, and demanded Disney to take a 20% pay cut. On the train journey back from New York, Walt would create Mickey Mouse, and in 1928, Steamboat Willie premiered. Though many mistaken Steamboat Willie as the first synchronized sound cartoon, this is not true. It wasn't with Dave and Max Fleischer's Inkwell Studios having produced 19 sound cartoons from 1924 to 1926. Steamboat Willie, however, would prove to be remarkably successful and influential, nonetheless. Across the pond in Europe, the Weimar Republic in Germany was going through the stylistic expressionist movement. And this stylistic experimental abstract form was brought to animation, with abstract animation, which was invented by Walter Richmond, Hans Richter, and Oskar Fischinger. Though this style was quashed by the Nazis as degenerate art, and wasn't pursued and developed after 1933. During the 1930s, animation continued to evolve, with Warner Brothers launching the Looney Tunes and founding Warner Brothers cartoons in 1933. In the 30s, Porky Pig was the Looney Tunes' first big star. The rivals Disney were still kings of shorts, with Disney pushing the boundaries of animation. In 1932, the first Technicolor cartoon was released, a silly symphony's Disney's Flowers and Trees. It was the first film to be produced in the full three color, three strip Technicolor process. The following year, Disney released the first color short. The feature developed characters, the Three Little Pigs, which went on to become the most successful animated short in film history, earning $250,000 or in today's money about $4.6 million. Technicolor soon became an industry standard, with Warner Brothers releasing Honeymoon Hotel, the first color Looney Tunes cartoon. The 1930s saw the arrival of more iconic characters, with Donald Duck first introduced in the Silly Symphonies for Wise Little Hen, Goofy and Orphan's Benefits, Daisy Duck and Pluto added to the Disney files, while Daffy Duck and Porky Pig for the Warner Brothers, and at Inkwell Studios, Betty Boop, and Popeye the Sailor Man. The most significant change to animation, though, came in 1937 with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Snow White is often mistaken as the first animated feature film. It's not, with that title going to the 1917 film El Aposto. But Snow White was a game changer, with Disney's rivals dubbing it Disney's Folly. The film went on to become the most successful film of all time. In 1937, until Gom Wynn surpassed it only two years later. However, to this day, taking inflation into account, the film remains the either the 10th or 11th highest grossing of all time, depending on the records. With Walt Disney winning an Oscar and seven little ones for his role in the production of Snow White. Snow White proved important as not only was it the first feature length Technicolor animation film, the film also implemented the new multi-plane camera, which helped give a three-dimensional feeling in many sequences, as well as a rotating effect during the Queen's transformation. Snow White had a profound impact. It cemented Disney's place in Hollywood, as well as that of animation as an art form, going on to influence every animated film and artist that came afterwards. In 1936, Rainbow Dance was created by Len Lai, using direct animation in which he drew over existing footage in the process of rotoscoping. The 1940s saw the further experimentation of animation styles with dots created through direct animation by Norman McLaren in which he drew on blank film 
using the design of dots to represent and match the display. The golden age of Disney continued in the 1940s, with an array of classic films such as Pinocchio, Fantasia, Dumbo and Bambi all following Snow White. Disney would continue to raise the standard of animation, with the animation supervised by the Nine Old Men. Disney continued to push the boundaries of animation, developing technology such as widescreen cinoscope, as well as bringing in real-life people and animals which could be used to help stylize the animation to make it as realistic as possible. The 40s were highly influenced by the Second World War, with many studios ordered to make propaganda features, of which both Warner Brothers and Disney did. Perhaps most infamously was the Donald Duck short, Da Fura's Face. Warner Brothers would find their answer to Mickey Mouse with Bugs Bunny debuting in 1940. The rabbit would go on to eclipse Mickey in the decades, as Mickey Mouse shorts declined with Goofy, Donald and Pluto all becoming Disney's staple. The 40s would see the emergence of MGM's iconic network of cartoon characters as well, such as Tom and Jerry and Woody Woodpecker. The 1950s saw the emergence of television, and with television, the decline of the animation short. Although Looney Tunes, Tom and Jerry and Disney all remained popular, the biggest change was that of Hanna-Barbera. To television with the Huckleberry Hound Show, premiering in 1958. It was the first television program to feature only animation, with The Flintstones, which premiered only two years later in 1960, becoming the first animated show on primetime TV. These shows significantly reduced interest in animation shorts. The Hanna-Barbera cartoons were cheaply and crudely made. With lots of cycles used, the animation is choppy. The animation was still on celluloid, but the bare minimum was done to get the action and story across in order to save time and money. Cost-effective techniques such as smears, looping cycles, and the use of suggestion used to get the point across. When one thinks of the history of animation, one does not usually think of the Beatles, but in 1968, the Beatles released The Yellow Submarine, with a limited artsy, psychedelic animation style it used a variation of animation techniques such as Selene animation, rotoscoping, stop frames, cutouts, and direct animation on footage to get across its point, and to stylize its form. Following the death of Walt Disney, Disney would enter a period known as the Disney Dark Ages, in which the quality of animation and films dropped significantly, with old footage recycled for many new films. It would take years for Disney to recapture its old flame. While Disney, while Disney may have been down, it would be Japan with its unique stylistic animation style known as anime, who Japan's own Walt Disney, Hayao, Hayao Miyazaki, but anime would grow in popularity with a stream of high quality films and shows with the popularity increasing through the 80s, 90s and well into the 21st century. The production booming in the 80s with a stream of hits such as My Neighbor Totoro and How's Moving Castle. And in 1988, the anime Grave of the Fireflies, which would tackle one of the most mature themes about the tragedy of war and the desperate survival of the innocent individuals who were caught up in the hell of war. In 2002, the Japanese animated film Spirited Away would go on to become the very first film to win the Best Animated Film at the Academy Awards. Anime uses cell animation, in which backgrounds are painted with watercolors. Anime is today among the last studios still producing traditional animation. In 1988, John Swank Major created the series Alice using stop-motion animation in which a doll is photographed, taking a small individual movement to create a sequence. It takes hours and hours of work, but the style is more tangible and realistic than that of regular animation, leading to the use of claymation and stop-motion works such as Wallace and Gromit. With Ardman's animations, characters were made out of plastic scene and sets from many other materials, which went on to become highly successful and popular. 1989 would prove to be an important year for the history of animation, with two animation classics debuting this year, though they were very different. 
and their forms and their styles and their stories. The Simpsons and the Little Mermaid. The Simpsons is the longest running sitcom and animated program with 625 episodes. The show will soon surpass Gunsmoke for the most prime time episodes of any series. The Simpsons was different than any previous animation. It was grown up, mature and satirized the standard nuclear family that had been a common trope in sitcoms in the 70s and 80s. It proved that animation could be adult and lay the foundation for many other classic adult series such as Family Guy, South Park, Futurama and Rick and Morty with a wide array of classic characters and lines entering pop culture. The character of Homer Simpson is today among the most recognizable cartoon characters of all time. While The Simpsons may have changed how animation stories could work, Disney would return to their roots with the Disney Renaissance, a 10 year period in which Disney experienced a creative surge and it all began with The Little Mermaid in 1989. Following The Little Mermaid, other classics such as Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King, Mulan, Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hercules and Tarzan, as well as Pocahontas were all released in this time with Beauty and the Beast becoming the first animated film to be nominated for Best Picture. Beauty and the Beast would be among the first to use CGI in the background, used in the background sequence of a ballroom scene. The Lion King would also implement the use of CGI during the Wildebeests stampede with several distinct Wildebeests created in a 3D program and then multiplied in. Traditional animation may have appeared to have been at its absolute zenith in the mid-1990s, but in 1995, a film came along that would change all that. Toy Story premiered. Toy Story was to be the most important animated film since Snow White almost 60 years prior. Toy Story shook things up. It was Pixar's first film, which at the time was headed by Steve Jobs. Pixar was given the task of producing the first 3D art, free Pixar was given the task of producing the first 3D CGI full-length feature film. At the time, CGI had been most well used in Jurassic Park. Pixar had made animated shorts before, such as The Tin Toy, which was the first CGI film to win an Oscar for Best Short. CGI animation is done through 3D modeling, and it virtually killed traditional animation in cinemas, with Disney's last traditional film being in 2011, with no plan to return to the traditional animated style as films such as Tangled, Frozen and Zootopia have become the Disney CGI norm. While for Pixar, following Toy Story, they entered their own golden era, with a stream of hits such as A Bug's Life, Toy Story 2 and 3, Finding Nemo, Finding Nemo Monsters Inc, The Incredibles, Cars, Up, Ratatouille and Wally, all produced in a 15 year period. Rivals DreamWorks animation was founded not long after Toy Story, and using CGI animation made their work their own classic films such as Shrek, Madagascar and With the advent of cable, a stream of networks dedicated to animation popped up in the 90s, airing shows such as Animaniacs, Darkwing Duck and Ren and Stimpy, and most successfully of all, Batman the Animated Series, which has consistently ranked amongst the greatest animated television shows ever created. The 21st century would see this trend of high quality animated television programs continue with the works of Avatar The Last Airbender, The Legend of Korra, Gravity Falls and Adventure Time. In 2006, Richard Linklater directed the experimental animation film A Scan Darkly, which was filmed digitally and then animated with rotoscope, which makes the key frames from the video interpolate with the in-between frames automatically, adding detail with drawing tablets. The advent of streaming services such as Netflix, animated programs such as Rick and Morty and Bojack Horseman have been born. Today most animated TV programs are made with the software Toon Boom, which works like a multi-plane camera with layers for each asset. It's the same as the traditional style of cell animation, but everything's done on computer. It's quicker and cheaper and still maintains the same charm and style of traditional animation, with, with this style used for television programming. Ultimately, animation will continue to grow and thrive over the coming decades and remain a popular art form. Thank you guys, and if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more.
the end of it. That's all, folks.